Hi, Chanel from Tips and Tricks HQ here and in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at the basic setup and usage of the WP Express Checkout plugin. So this plugin is designed for WordPress and it allows you to create a product or service that you can sell from your website and your customers can check out using that easy PayPal pop-up window. So let's take a look at the setup of this plugin and later in the tutorial I'll run through a checkout that your customer would undertake to purchase a product. I've just gone ahead and I've logged in to my WordPress dashboard where we'll first need to activate the WP Express Checkout plugin. So you can simply just go to your plugins, add new and install this plugin and then activate it here. Ensure that it is the plugin by Tips and Tricks HQ and that it's titled WP Express Checkout. Once you have activated that plugin, you'll notice a new menu in your WordPress dashboard. This will be titled WP Express Checkout and it will have a number of sub menus. We'll be taking a look at the settings menu next. Once you've clicked on that settings menu of the plugin, you'll notice two different tabs, general settings and email settings. We'll first take a look at our general settings tab. Under the currency code, you'll need to choose your currency from the drop down menu. It's really the PayPal credentials section that is important in the setup of this plugin. So just draw your attention to the PayPal credentials and it's here that we'll need to enter in our live and sandbox client IDs. So both your live client ID and your sandbox client ID can be found in your PayPal developer account. If you're a little bit confused on where to find these, head to your PayPal developer account and they can be found under the apps and credentials menu. If you still get stuck, simply click read this documentation for some written instructions on how to better find these details. So once you copy and paste them, make sure that you paste your live client ID into this field and your sandbox client ID into this field. If you mix them up, your transactions are not going to go ahead. If you're going to run your website in live mode, make sure that you mark this checkbox. If you're going to continue testing for the time being, just leave this unchecked as I will do. If we scroll down further, we can customize the way our button appears on our website. So this will be your payment button. So you can choose between the different button types. You can choose between the different button shapes, pill or rectangle. You can choose the button layout. You can choose the button height. Maybe we'll do large just so you can see that for now. And then you can choose your button width and button color. So that'll all display below so you can preview what your button looks like before you proceed. You can come back and customize your buttons at any time and then they'll be displayed on your website. You can disable certain types of funding. For example, you might not want to accept American Express on your website and you can simply disable this by checking the appropriate box. If you're going to be doing some testing, it's a good idea to enable your debug logging feature. So this basically logs the transaction and it will show any errors as they appear. So if you're just doing some troubleshooting or some testing for now, make sure that you have this enabled before you go ahead and save all those changes. So I'm gonna click that save changes button now before we move on to do our email settings. So within this email settings tab, there's three things I'd really like to show you. Firstly, just make sure you've got your send emails to buyer after purchase box enabled. This will ensure that an email is sent to the buyer after a successful purchase. Your from email address will really need to follow the your name sales at your domain.com format. So it's basically the, your company name or the website name and then sales and then the at your domain you'll need to change to your actual domain. So mine is plugin slash demo.com which I can see up in this URL here and I need to make sure that that is in there correctly. So it's sales at plugin slash demo.com I can ensure that that is correct and I can move on. The third thing I'd like to show you is the send emails to seller after purchase. So if you check this, the merchant will also get an email after the successful transaction. So just ensure that the notification email address there is correct of the merchant. So you may need to put your email address in there, your personal or your business email that you wish to get those sales um, transaction details to. So once you've done all that, just save the changes and we're gonna now create our very first product. So we'll be going to click on that products menu next. Within the products menu, if you haven't created any products yet, you won't see anything. Although once they have been created, they'll all be listed 
under that products menu and you'll be able to see the ID, the price and the short code for those products. So I'll quickly show you how you can add your very first product. Click on the add new product button. Once you're in the add new product interface, you can give your product a title. It's here that you can add a description and you can add any photos you'd like about your product that you have for sale or your service that you have for sale. So you can add quite a lot of description there or just a simple few sentences. It's really up to you, but this should be where you really try and sell that product. If you want to add any media, just simply click on the add media and you can choose between your media library pictures or you can upload a new image. The price you can determine yourself. So you can add in any sort of price such as $14.95. Don't add any currency symbols though, just the price. You can add a quantity of the item that the customer will need to purchase as a minimum if you want. So if I added in two, each time my customer clicks that purchase button, they'd be purchasing two of this item each at $14.95. So I'll just have one, or you can also allow the customer to specify the quantity. So if you allow customers to specify the quantity, you'll get a little field on the front end that allows them to enter in a number. So I'd actually allow my customers to enter in how many of the handbags they'd like to purchase in one transaction. If you're offering a digital product, it's here that you can add that URL of that product that you wish to give them. So if that's a graphical image, you'll need to select your file and add that in there. So as mine's just a tangible item, I won't be adding anything today in that download URL, although you can if you have a downloadable product. So that's basically the creation of a product. I'm just gonna publish out my product. Now that I've published out my product, if I go to that products menu, I can see that my handbag's here and I can see the short code for that product. So to add your product to a post or page, or you might like to add it to your sidebar as a widget, just simply copy that short code. Now that I have that short code copied, if I head and create either a post or a page, I can give my page a quick title and then I can add that short code in here. So to add that short code, I'll need to add it into the short code block. I use the short code block a lot, so it's under the most used, but if you don't, you can find that short code under the widget section. So it's here that you just go ahead and you paste in that short code of your product. So once I publish out this page, on the front end of my website, I should be able to see that purchase button. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that now so we can check out if my product has worked. So view page, and there's my product. And I can see that PayPal button. I'll now go ahead and I'll just conclude this tutorial by demonstrating how your customer would check out with that PayPal buy now button. I'll just be completing a sandbox checkout, although please note that the live transaction is very similar. So you click that PayPal buy now button and they'll be presented with a PayPal pop-up window. Once they see that PayPal pop-up window, they'll need to enter in their PayPal, email and password and log in, or they can choose to pay with a debit or credit card. I'll be using a PayPal Sandbox account to complete this transaction. As I'm only purchasing one handbag, quantity one, I can see that's gonna charge me $14.95 USD. I'll go ahead and I'll pay now using one of the credit cards I have on that PayPal Sandbox. I'm directed to that thank you page created by the plugin and I can see my transaction details and my transaction ID. I'll also receive an email to that PayPal account with the further transaction details. And if it was a downloadable product, I could find that download link there as well.